Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today's problem is a colleague calls to tell you she plans to carry out the following two-factor cross a true breeding flies line with bent wings will be crossed to a true breeding line with short legs and least specified other traits appear normal f1 flies will then cross to a true breeding strain with bent wings and short legs your colleague wants to know what proportion of the progeny from this cross will have bent wings and short legs? What would you tell her? So, as usual, I recommend to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your own first, and when you would be ready, you can run video again, and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. So, let's start with uh, analyzing phenotypes of uh, two uh, true breeding uh, flies of the um, first parental generation. We were told that uh, uh, one uh, flies has uh, bent wings, so bent wings, and we cross with another um, uh, true line with uh, short legs. Uh, this gives us information that um, that line uh, of flies with bent wings has normal length of uh, legs. So let's uh, say that uh, this first trait, uh, uh, shape of the wings, would be designated with um, A. So because uh, flies has uh, two sets of chromosomes, uh, we can say that uh, this first line has mutated alleles. Because this is true breeding, both alleles have to be mutated. So uh, both alleles A have to be small a, small a. And the second trait uh, uh, shape of the uh, legs, let's say this is gene B, uh, for this gene uh, this uh, fly is uh, homozygous dominant. And we cross with another line that has uh, normal wings, so capital A, capital A, and uh, has uh, bent legs. Because this is true breeding line, uh, we know that uh, both alleles have to be small b, small b. By the way, we call uh, pure lines such uh, lines, uh, whether of animals or plants, when we cross uh, with themselves, self pollinate, for example, if flowers are white in following generations we would see that flowers always would be white and we wouldn't uh, be able to see red or any other color. If we cross, for example, uh, this pure line with among themselves, we always would see that wings are uh, bent. And uh, if we cross this line among themselves, we always would see that uh, legs are short. So this is uh, parental generation, this is going to be parent 1, this is going to be parent 2, as you see of two different genotypes, and in F1 generation uh, all the progeny going to be uh, heterozygous for the uh, gene A, so would get uh, any of these alleles from parent 2, so this is going to be capital A, there is no other choice, and one of these alleles uh, for this um, gene from the parent one, both alleles are recessive, and uh, most of the uh, mutations, I would tell you, are recessive, because uh, whenever we see a mutation, in most cases, this is loss of uh, function, and everything in our organism, as long in uh, Flies, for example, in other animals are duplicated. We have two uh, alleles, even if we have one mutated allele and we have uh, still one normal allele. And in most cases, one normal allele would be enough for the organism to show normal trait. And only very, very few mutations that uh, we call uh, gain of function when uh, allele mutated can uh, damage or can change phenotype of the organism or damage any biological uh, pathway. 
So as you see in F1 generation, we see for the gene A uh, heterozygous condition and for the gene B also we have uh, capital B from one of the parents and small b from the other parent. So 100% of the F1 generation going to be heterozygous for both traits. So what is the phenotype of F1 generation and uh, wings should be normal size and uh, legs also have to be have to appear uh, normal. Those uh, as you see genotype is heterozygous for both um, genes. Now uh, according to our problem F1 flies will be then crossed to a true breeding strain with bent wings and short legs. That means that we have to cross this um, F1 generation with true breeding flies for uh, bent wings and short legs. So this is genotype of uh, these flies and uh, what we can expect in the following generation uh, of course uh, this parent only can produce uh, gametes that is small a and small p no other variant this um, genotype can produce gametes are haploid so uh, we would have small a small b gametes that this organism can produce but uh, this f1 generation can produce four different types of gametes the first variant would be capital A and capital B. So this is going to be the first variant, capital A, capital B. The second variant would be capital A and small b. So capital A and small b. The third variant would be uh, small a and capital B. Small a and capital B. And the third variant would be small a and small b small a and small b now when we build a Punnett square we can see all the genotypes possible in the progeny uh, when we cross this uh, two parents with this genotypes so capital A small a here capital B and small b here, capital A, small a here, and small b, small b here, small a, small a, capital B, small b here, and small a, small a, small b, small b here. So four uh, different genotypes possible when we cross these parents. Now let's read once again question. Uh, your colleagues want to know what proportion of the progeny from this cross will have bent wings and short legs. So, as you see, only uh, this genotype would produce a phenotype that is uh, bent wings and short legs. Because, for example, here, this is going to be bent wings and normal legs. Here we have normal wings and bent legs and this genotype produce normal phenotype uh, with normal wings and normal legs. So our answer would be 25% of all the progeny would have uh, bent wings and short legs. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.